KTM protege René Hofer joins the MX2 World Championship for the 2020 season. He's risen quickly through the junior ranks. But is he ready for the big time? I'm René Hofer, I'm from Austria, and I just turned 18 years old, and I kind of... Do you want to get that? No. <laughs> it's my sister. <laughs> okay, what was the question again? Uh, my dad was like an amateur in motocross, and yeah, I got my first bike from him, obviously. You always dream about it, but when you're like seven, eight years, it's very far away. As soon as you become a factory rider, then, then the dream has come true, I think. Now he's the rookie, of course. He's new in the factory team, so it was a bit overwhelming for him at the beginning. I could see a little bit of stress on his face, you know, like, oh, what's all this? And, and, and what can I expect and everything? From the day we managed to explain him, the more fun you're gonna have, the better your zil's gonna be. Uh, from that day on, he, he had more that smile on his face and also the, the results from there, let's say, <laughs> went up. Papa, they won't need the So the biggest influence for sure was my family, of course, in the first few years. And afterwards, for sure, my trainer, Didi Lacher. Yeah, we have a really close connection and to have a trainer for, for the fifth year in a row is not, not something normal, I would say. My name is Didi, Didi Lacha. I'm the trainer and he's the papa. We had a lot of success together and always the plan was uh, being in the world championship, so we made it. We are here now. As an Austrian rider at KTM, René is following in the tracks of homegrown legend Heinz Kindergartner. I came into the, in the KTM YAF program after I won my 85 World Championship. And yeah, from there on, it actually gets really professional from, from the 1 to 5 class on, I would say. September last year to get into the factory team, and it was a really big thing for me because I cheered for every, for every Red Bull KTM rider. <laughs> So it was always my dream to come to come to this team. We are an Austrian-based uh, uh, company, factory, uh, with KTM, and René is Austrian as well. So yeah, that's that's the first time uh, that that we have that. Nix is also kind of proud to have a, to have a local matador, like they say in, in German. So that's nice. The intensity in the MX2 class is much higher. Every training was really intense, especially down in Spain when we had three good weeks of, of training camp. Tom kind of kind of pushed me, or we pushed each other to the limits in training as well. Switch. Three, two, one, go. Tom is more serious, is more reserved. Instead, him is a bit more open, and so I think they compensate together very much. And uh, I think when the boys train together. It's only positive for each one of them. Yeah, I like it when it's Jeffrey there, when it, I don't know, it's more fun, it's more people, there's more things to do. And uh, yeah, I think Let's it's go. really nice. Come on, three, two, one. Okay. And now From smile. what we've seen in the winter, it kind of confirmed that we were right when we thought he had the right attitude and the right approach and stuff like that. Uh, and then you can make progress. I think we had a great winter, so we're, we're definitely ready for the races. The first Grand Prix of 2020 about to kick off. The fly racing 15 second board goes up. Three, two, one. Hoffer not going to make it easy for him at the bottom of the first descent. And takes the lead from Yago Kien. His first goal for that race was hey, let's enjoy my first P in the official factory team. Still leading his level KTM teammate, Tom Bial. Lapping evenly. Uh, yeah, I could see him enjoying it. We 
know Rene has potential, but, but to be honest, that, that he was kind of leading the race for nearly uh, full moto, he surprised not only a few. What a great performance this is from Rene Hoffer. Oh, it was great. Unbelievable. Diao goes past. Hoffer takes over the lead. Tom just had a few more reserves in the, in the end. But anyway, I was super excited about the second place in the first race. So, yeah, it was just, just perfect. Rene leaves Great Britain with the first race podium in the World Championship. Now we're going into Falkenspart, first sandwich of the season. We've done a lot of sand prep in the winter. And if you have fun on the track, you're always fast, so that's kind of the key. Rennie Hoffer is starting to uh, find his feet in this MX2 division, isn't he? as you can see, and conditions are going to get worse. It was really wet and really tricky to ride. Many people would say that Metally was my best performance, but I would actually say that the Falkenswart, for me personally, even better. Because, you know, I'm Austrian, I, I didn't grow up with sand tracks. Actually really surprising that I could keep, keep up with the front guys in the, in the real deep sand. Rene finishes an impressive fourth place in the first race, but struggles in the second. Still, it's a valuable experience for the rookie. First moto was really solid. Um, I had a really good feeling and finished in fifth. Yeah, second race I, I thought I could do the same. Um, had a pretty good start again. I got the second ball and I came together with another rider. So the start is really important in motocross nowadays. There are a lot of pressures and you have to be pretty careful. Anyway, I will be back to 100% on Wednesday, and yeah, we will all do it again then. At the midweek race in Latvia, Rene is determined to break back into the top 10 of the World Championship standings. Race two. Around the outside. Oh, Hofer is down. But he's uh, going to put him in the ambulance now, but Rainey is, uh, Rainey is on his way to the, to the medical center. Yeah, well, I'm in the back here. But he, yeah, he fell behind the words, so I didn't see how he touched the ground. Yesterday, well, the luck was not on his side. Rene has broken his left shoulder. He faces surgery and months of rehab. His season is over. Yeah, it was really painful because um, the time was, was really long until I was in Austria um, and had surgery. So it was difficult days for me. After one month, approximately, I was able to, to go back to the Red Bull facilities 
doing doing my first physio sessions and my first um, light training sessions, just the feeling to come closer and closer to the, to the next goal again. And the next goal is obviously being back on the bike and being back racing. Um, it's such a shame that his injury kind of cost him the whole season. So we couldn't really see what he was capable of doing. But I do think it makes you a better rider. You get through the injuries. It's, it's a mental battle as well as a physical battle and it makes you stronger. So I definitely think for him, it's a learning curve and he's going to definitely bounce back and learn so much from this year and what he's been through. The strong part of René for sure is that he's really one of those guys who is willing to put in whatever is needed. There's uh, way more to come from his side. He's super focused, you know, he's sometimes a little bit too focused. He's knowing what he's doing and he wants to do. To take the fear away, if, if I might crash again, the, these boys don't have that. That's, they, they know it's part of the sport and it, it might happen. And, and they know it. It's a bag in their head, but uh, if you think too much about it, then you're not going to be a racer. Tough life. Tough life. <laughs> 2020 was, yeah, it was crazy. I think what I've learned is just going into the races more relaxed and seeing it as a normal day and not as a day where I can get a great result at the World Championship race. The injury has overcome. Also my mind, I don't think about it anymore. So it's, it's good to be back at the bike and not thinking about what could go wrong. So that's quite a nice feeling. Now I feel good and I'm ready to go again. My goals for, for 2021 is definitely to stay injury free and to have a full season, um, which would be my first full season in MX2. Learning lessons, GP by GP, you will get smarter, you will get more experience and yeah, that's it. In the handful of races René completed in 2020, he finished in the top five three times. He returns to competition a little older, a lot wiser, and ready to deliver on his potential.